going to do is I'm going to start showing you how to use them, how to use these three rules. All right, so what do we do here? Let's start with um, looking at the periodic table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking at different elements. So we're going to start with hydrogen. And what I'll do is I will draw the um, configuration and the, or the orbital diagram for hydrogen. Okay, so we do hydrogen. So if I draw the orbital diagram for hydrogen, let's change the color here. What I'll do is hydrogen. First thing I need to know is how many electrons. Well, hydrogen has one electron, right? One valence electron. So what I do is I draw one box and I designate that the 1s and I put a single electron there. There's your orbital diagram for hydrogen. It sits in the first energy level, lowest energy level, and it happens to be an s. Then we go to helium. When I do helium, how many electrons does helium have? If you forgot, go back to your periodic table. Helium has two electrons. How do I know that? Because we're doing is we're filling in for ground state, meaning we're going to put them in their lowest energy possible, neutral elements. Okay, we'll talk about ions a little bit later, but for right now we're doing neutral. So what that means is whatever the atomic number is, is going to be the, the, the number of pro, uh, protons and electrons. So chlorine would have 17 electrons, copper would have 29. All right, so let's take a look at helium. So helium has two electrons, so if I follow the rules, 1s, I put 1, 2. Helium is filled. Then I go to lithium. Lithium has three electrons. I go in the first energy level, 1s, 1, 2. That is now filled, so now I have to go to the next one, which happens to be the 2s, and I put another electron. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing this over and over and over. Then I go to beryllium, and if you want, go back to the periodic table. Beryllium has now got four electrons, so I put the same thing that I did here. I draw the boxes again, one, so one s, and I just follow my rules, two s, and I have to put whenever I put two electrons in, I have to put one up, one down. And the question is, do I can I put it the other way? Could I go down and up? Sure, you could do that if you want. If you want to do full arrows, that's fine too. I don't care. Um, you know, there's a reason why I do the half arrows. It has to do with the the spin nature of the electron. Don't get, don't ask me about it. It's confusing, but it's what I do. Half arrows. Then I go to boron. Boron has five valence electrons, and again I'm going to draw the boxes. One s, fill that, and then I go to two s, fill this, and then I go to the two p, and I then put an electron. Now the p has three boxes. One two, three boxes, and I put one electron here. Okay, so boron, 1s, 2s, and I just keep following that order. That order of filling is 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, okay? Right, I'm going to show you where I get that in just one second. What I want to do is just show you another one, just to show you Hun's rule. Okay, so I'm going to do oxygen. Oxygen has eight electrons. Okay, I'm going to jump to oxygen. Oxygen has eight valence electrons, I'm sorry, eight electrons total. So that means that I have two here, one, two, and I go to the next energy level, which is now the second energy level, three, four, and I go to the P. Now this is Hun's rule. Off-bow rule, I start with the 1s, then I go to the 2s, the 2p. Poly exclusion, two electrons, one up, one down. Hun's rule, I do three boxes for the 2p. Now I have one, two, three, four. I still have four electrons to use for oxygen. So I do one, two, three, four. That's Hun's rule. That's how oxygen should look. One, two, three, four. Two unpaired electrons. These are referred to as paired electrons because they're all doubled up. These are unpaired electrons. And that's going to be important when we look at uh, reactivity in just a little bit. So if you're doing the 2P for oxygen, this is what a lot of people do if they're not following Hun's rule. They'll do one, two, three, four. That is not the correct structure. You do not want to do it. This that does not follow Hun's rule. Hun's rule says we do one, two, three, and then four. Let's try one more here. Let's do a configuration. Let's do chlorine because it's kind of a long one. All right, um, chlorine has 17, I think it was 17, right? I'm pretty sure it was yeah, 17. 17 valence electrons. So we do 1, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Orbital diagram for chlorine. 
Okay, we'll practice using class, so I'm sure you're not going to get these right off the top of your head right now, but bear with me. All right, one thing I want to show you is how am I getting that order? How do I know what next, what, that, that it's 4S that comes next? One, memorize it if you want. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. Here's how you do it. Periodic table has that information encoded in it. What I'm doing is I'm reading is I'm going from hydrogen here. If, if I number this, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These here are your energy levels. Okay, those are energy levels, and that would be your N equals. That's what that is. These are your Ns. So hydrogen is an N. This area here is referred to as the S's. S's have how many orbitals? One orbital and an S. How many electrons? One, two electrons. Hydrogen is right here. It's a one S electron, right? Helium is one and this technically should be kind of over here, because remember, hydrogen and helium are kind of unique in the way they work. This would be my 1s2. So this is my 1s1, 1s2. Then I come down here, 2s1, 2s2. That's what we're doing. It should be a 2 here, by the way. 2s1, 2s2. Then over here are my p's. How many orbitals are in a p? Three orbitals. So a p has three orbitals. And each one gets three or two electrons, so six electrons each. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is your piece. This would be your two P's. So this block here, right here, happens to be your P block. So these are all your P's. This over here is all of your S's. This middle portion, I think you're going to kind of get the idea here, this middle portion here is going to be your D's. And down here are your F's. That's why the periodic table looks the way it does, because of the S, P, D orbitals. Okay, so if I get rid of this, we can actually look at, oops, let me do this here. You can actually see where I'm going with this. This is the basic pattern on the periodic table. What you guys want to do is, if you have your periodic tables, you may want to write this stuff down here. So what I can do is I can say, okay, one, first energy level, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So all I do is I read the periodic table from left to right to get the order of filling, to get the off bow order. So 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d. Now notice 4s comes before the 3, 3, uh, 3d. So that's what the, the periodic table corrects that for you. You don't have to worry about that. Just take a look at here. There's an empty space here because there is no 1p. There is no 1, 1d or 2d. That's why we have an empty space here in the periodic table. Okay, so you have 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s. Now here's the problem. You have to break the periodic table right here. Remember, there's a break in the periodic table, and this section is supposed to go in here, right? goes right in here. There's a break in that periodic table. So this is where it gets a little tricky. You got to do 6s, then down here to 4f14. If you ever want to know how many electrons are in an f, count these boxes here. If you want to know how many orbitals, cut it in half. How many electrons in a d? 10. How many orbitals are there? 5. So all the answers to the orbital diagrams and electron configurations are embedded right here in the periodic table. All right, we'll go over this more in class, but that's how you get that order of filling. So 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, then down to the 5f, back to the 6d, and then back down. This would be what's called the 7p. Of course, this periodic table is a little old. We haven't, they didn't discover these at that point, but we do now. So that would be your 7p's that would go in here. And you can continue on with 8s and so on and so forth throughout the periodic table. All right. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is a pretty short one. It just takes these orbital diagrams and conf uh, converts them into uh, electron configurations. So um, I guess that's it. I'll talk to you guys later.